and welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at auto completion. Auto completion in Emacs. Now before we get to installing packages, allow me to explain how auto completion works. Because it's a very peculiar subject and it's something that really uh, it really activates my elements sometimes. And this is also the reason why I still use an IDE for a Qt development. Uh, until I get it figured out and you know set up in Emacs the way I want. When you have you know all those fancy IDEs, you have built in very very good auto completion, IntelliSense and whatnot. If you are using a text editor like Emacs or Vim, uh, you need to put in some work. Now the way Vim handles auto completion, specifically C auto completion, which is the example we are going to be setting up today. Uh, it ground my gear so hard that I decided to start using Emacs. That's one of the reasons. And the way uh, completion works in something like Emacs is as follows. You have a completion engine. There is two major ones. One is called Autocomplete and the other one is called Company. As you can probably tell by this visual cue right here, I am using Company because I think it's nicer. And when you have it set up, it doesn't do much on its own. What it does is, it does all dump auto-completion, right? So you have like, it looks for similar occurrences of what you're trying to type in this buffer, and then tries to auto-complete, which is, uh, it's pretty meh, right? It doesn't do much. It's not particularly good for serious development if you really want to be productive. However, um, you can add backends to it. For, in, for every programming language, you need to have a backend, something that actually does the completion for you. Luckily, for C and C++, I have found the single best one, and this is exactly what I'm going to uh, show you today. For it to work, you will also need Clang. Clang is a compiler. It's a C and C++ compiler. And the easiest way to check if you have it installed you know, just see if you have the executable. If you don't, install it. It's either called libclang, like this, or clang uh, in your package manager. I think it's, if you're using like a Debian or Debian derivative, it's libclang. Uh, Gen2 and Arch use just normal clang. If you installed it and you do not have this executable yet, you are going to have to uh, check where it is. Because potentially, this is what happens on uh, on Gentoo, by the way. If you install it, only the root user has access to it by default. Don't ask me why. But if you do which uh, clang, you are going to see, okay, it's in user bin clang because this isn't Gentoo. Normally, it's in like var lib uh, llvm bin or five bin clang, and you have to symlink it to user bin to your path or add the actual clang executable to your path, whatever. As long as you can use clang normally, you're going to be fine. Contrary to say you complete me and Vim, you don't need to compile clang and LLVM specifically for it. You don't need to have like a local copy of it. This just, it's so much easier with Emacs than with Vim. It blows my mind. First things first, let us set up company. Now company, it's just a regular package. And this, by the way, this is company. This is what we are setting up. Right? It's it's pretty good. It's pretty smart. The package is called com just company. We are going to make sure that it's installed. And there is a few configuration options that you can set up. One of those is uh, the delay after which you are going to have auto completion. The variable is called company idle delay. And you can set it to a number of seconds. I have zero. So it starts autocompleting immediately. You can, however, set it up to, say, one. And when you do uh, use... Uh, now you have to wait for a second. And then it shows you all the options. Uh, I don't want to wait. You know, I've got stuff to do and places to be. So I set it up to zero. And I recommend you do as well. Some people say it eats up CPU. Uh, turns us... You know, like people say it's very CPU intensive. It really isn't. I mean, I don't know. If you're using a 20-year-old machine, then maybe. Uh, 
this is this is AVM and it's working great. The other variable that I recommend you set up is wait this minimum minimum prefix prefix length exactly. After how many characters do you want company to kick in? You can set up one. So after just one character, you are going to have all your options. I have it set up to two, uh, or three, much rather. I changed it recently. I had it set up to two. Now I have it set up to three, because there is a lot of like Emacs Lisp snippets that I use. So something like this. It will start to autocomplete and mess up my workflow. You know, change it up, make it make it your own. Do whatever you like. These are just the defaults that I have. The next thing that we are going to be taking a look at, because this by itself, again, this is just dump completion. It doesn't do, it doesn't do terribly much. What you can do, however, already, and I highly recommend it, is change the keys you use to navigate the completion. By default, you use meta n and meta p. I don't know why. It, it annoyed me, so I changed it to control n and control p. So if you have like. I, uh, like you have your completion list normally you'd have to go meta n and p i can just go control n and p it doesn't collide with anything it works very well and obviously control g cancels company right you hit tab to uh, force completion uh, or enter to select a completion so we are going to be changing a few uh, key bindings now and these key bindings will only be defined for the company active map so these keys only work when you actually have completion to be done, so it doesn't, you know, interfere with all your others. The way we are going to set it up is, we are going to call with evaluate after load, so, you know, this is only evaluated after company is loaded. And we are going to do a few things. We are going to define key for company active map, and the key, um, key bar or keyboard, meta n will be nil all right and we are going to do the very same thing for meta p just to make sure that it doesn't interfere you can leave this out if you occasionally want to use the meta key why you would no idea we are also going to define another key for the company active map and this one will be our actual key so control N, and this one will be bound to company, uh, oh, oops, uh, God, what was it called? S select, yeah, select next. And select previous for control P. Oh boy. Yeah, just like this. This is all it takes. So after company is loaded, this is going to be executed. You know, obviously put those things in your config file. And with this, we have company set up. Now for the actual fun part for C and C++ completion. What you need is two more packages. One is called uh, company irony. Irony is another package that actually uses Clang as a backend to provide completion, then company irony is going to take these completions, put them or pipe them to company, and this way you have your completions. Wow, that was a mouthful. Anyways, what I want to do is I want to use package company irony, just like this. I'm going to obviously make sure that it's installed. I am also going to config and for the configuration, just to make sure that company is loaded, I'm going to add require company, you know, just, just to make sure. Now we are also going to add to list. And this is how you're going to be setting up all the completions. I'm going to make more videos on these for completion for say, um, Python, Lua or common Lisp. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really use any other languages much. You know, bash. Yeah, I'll, I'll make one for bash as well. So we are going to be adding to list company backends. And the what we are going to be using, or, add, or adding much rather, is called company irony. This is enough. 
this is all it takes. Let's evaluate this as well. It's installed for me, so again, it's not installing much. Next thing we, are, we have to set up is the actual irony. So I use package irony. Make sure that it's installed again. And we have to actually con add, make some configuration. So we have to set up some hooks. Oh boy, yeah, this is going to be fun. So we are going to set up a hook for C++ mode. And the function we are going to be calling is called irony mode. Just like this. Now we are going to set up another hook for C mode. And again, irony mode, just as we just did. The last hook is a bit different. Uh, we are going to be hooking into irony mode. And what the function we want is called irony uh, slash CDB auto setup compile up. Oops. Auto setup compile options. Again, another mouthful. But this is actually necessary. I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what this does. Well, it does set up clang in the background, but how it does so exactly, no idea. But it works. That's good enough for me. There's one more thing we need to set up, and um, this is what's actually going to activate company mode for when we are editing C and C++ files. You can probably already guess it's just a simple hook for company mode for C++ and C mode hook. So the way we set it up is, again, I'm going to just be careful and use with evaluate after load company, just to make sure that company is already loaded. The hook is C++, oops, C++ mode, and the function is called company mode. You can enable company mode globally, but I find it annoying. I really think that it's annoying, so I don't do it. Uh, sometimes you will have buffers like in org files, where you're not really writing any code, and it tries to autocomplete so hard. I don't know, it's annoying. I don't like it. Now with this out of the way, let's evaluate this. This is all you need to have C and C++ completion. Now obviously these here are optional options. I just really like those. And the key bindings, again, you know, it's, it's up to you. But this is all it takes. Put all of this in your config file. And let's see how it works. So let's do like test.cpp. You can tell company mode is enabled. If it isn't for you, uh, you might have messed something up, so, you know, just go over it slowly, understand what it does, and write your config again. So let's do include, oh yeah, let's include a header, standard, or why this isn't, this isn't C. I hate C++, why am I even doing this? And in here, you can see it already does most of it for us. I don't know why it does return expression when we just want to have basic stuff. Now, where is the part that everybody's been waiting for? If you'd say, I don't know, we have IOStream included, so STD. And it shows us all the completions. It just goes to Clang. It uses Clang. And there it is. It just works. As you can see, pretty mode, how did it work here? It's very, it's actually really, really good. Like, I was surprised by how powerful this uh, setup is. Because the auto-completion, again, for editors, it's sometimes a bit fickle, sometimes it doesn't really work. I find irony mode to be absolutely great. It just works. Again, I use it for C, I don't do C++ much. But, you know, just shoot, shoot yourself. The nice thing is, the way you have it set up now, let's go back to the scratch buffer here. With these set up already, you have company installed, so all you need is more backends. Now in the next, or maybe two or three videos, I'm going to be showing you a few backends and how to set them up that I find to be really good. So, for instance, Jedi for Python, or uh, Company Lua, obviously for Lua. Uh, I don't know, bash, like you have a shell uh, mode hook that you can, you know, you can install a company shell backend or company bash, I think it's called, and have it work there as well. So again, auto completion, not that difficult to set up.
uh, it works. It just does. I hope you are going to be using this because this is oh, it's one of those things that really set Emacs apart from other text editors, not IDEs, just text editors. Just how easy it is to set everything up the way it should be. And completion, uh, it's, it's not a very easy thing for a text editor to do, especially smart completion like this one, what we have already set up. Thank you for watching. Um, if there is a specific backend for a specific programming language, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Uh, just, you know, go down there in the comments, tell me what you need. I'll see if I can find something good, see if I can set it up properly, see how good it works. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.